Welcome back to another episode of a very basic space program. In this episode, we are gonna finally try and launch one of these probes all the way out to Mars. We may even send one to uh, to Mercury. We'll see, we've, we've gotta make a decision on quite a few things in this episode. So if you'd be interested in that, please join me. So here we are, and we are going to be doing a transfer to Mars because we should have enough Delta. We've got more than enough Delta V. Now, the interesting thing is I'm going to see what happens with the old timey-wimey warp on this because I am tempted. No, because uh, I was tempted to keep the stage on to try and keep some of the Delta V for a Mars arrival, but I've just realized it's Hydrolox. It's not Hydrolox. It's... Uh, liquid oxygen and uh, rp1 Keralox, so the liquid oxygen would burn off by the time we get to mars so that's not a it's not a possibility we're not going to be using that so oh there we have discovery two and is that discovery discovery one discovery two just floating around in space isn't that nice right so we want to go to mars we're going to set that as our target and then we're going to come up here and we're going to have a look at where are we maneuver planet there we go we can come we can actually stay in this screen now because we're just going to look at that um we do have one day to that mars sort of window that we'd identified i'm going to get rid of that as soon as we've done this so we're going to go pork chop there we go and we can see there is something immediate over there so let's have a look i want to go asap um anytime now it's going to be 4.2 that's not bad you know what let's just um because this was this was a good launch what does mercury come as just just in case, you know, just in case it's uh, remove all nodes. Um, ASAP. What's it going to say? Ooh. See that? That is tempting because we have enough delta V for that. Um, my Mercury window's in four days. What are we doing regarding uh, craft? That's going to be the interesting thing, isn't it? So let me just remind myself what's going on. We have not finished discovery four sorry discovery five discovery five has got two days let's just have a good look at this so i think that there that's even lower is it that's even lower so that area there is going to be perfect for us and that should give us enough so okay you know what? i'm not too worried about that um, we will we will do that. When's that when's that going to be in? That's in seven days. So remember, we're going to be potentially three days after that. So as long as we, we we've got an idea of that, as soon as Discovery Five is rolled out, we'll go for it, and then we'll put Discovery Six onto that next Mars window. I think I think that's what we're going to do. I think I think that's what we need to do. So we're going to reset that. So that's that that's that really nice Mercury window. The next one after that is it's not worksheets. Well, it's not bad actually the, the mercury windows are, are, are pretty often so that's not a problem right so let's let's go back to mars set this target compute it that asap please okay create node and that's going to be in an hour and 15 we might lose mm. we might lose a bit of fuel by then what's our rate of loss oh we're not actually according to this it's a very small amount of liquid oxygen we're losing so we should be okay um we want to keep our eye on electric charge as we do time warp right so we, we're actually we're able to build up charge that's okay um we there's no hope of us using this to do um anything other than the transfer burn though so what we're going to do is we will um why do i not right we're getting signal what are we getting signal through green canaries so we're going to i'm going to accelerate time just a smidgen to well, you know what we need to uh Ah, we've now got this locked in because because we've actually got the alarm set up to generate alarms whenever i put maneuvers in that's really quite handy um so i shouldn't overshoot it which is a positive so we'll do that to there right we're definitely building charge up which is nice that's nice to see we're getting intermittent signal which is concerning but we should be okay i think now i could get this to execute in fact you know what? i'm going to do it I'm gonna, i don't normally do this we're going to get the we're going to get the maneuver planner to execute the burn for us so that you can see just how accurate it can be um are, are we going to do it no we'll, we'll we might do it we might do it let's have a think about it got a minute left to go right okay we've got a lot of electricity thank you very much we'll delete on close got about a minute until burn time starts so we're going to go for node we're going to turn on our rcs 
Have we activated the RCS is the question. I do not believe I have. There we go. Right, now we have activated our RCS. So the RCS should be pulling us around. We've got about a minute to get to where we need to be. That's going to be problematic, I can see already. Right. Okay, we wanna, just want to hurry that turn up a little bit. We may end up actually firing the engine in the wrong orientation because I probably should have reorientated this properly myself. And we don't have control to do that. That's brilliant. Oh, we may actually miss the window thinking about this. Um, let's try... What can we do? Can we do uh, a little bit of... Okay, we can do that. Right, okay, so we're going to execute node. Right. So it should be trying to execute the node. Is it going to do it, though? That's the interesting thing. I don't know if it actually does it when you're not aligned. Um, how many starts have I got on this? Because I could just use this to slew us round. I do, all right, I've got five starts on this. You know what? We're going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna force this. Oh no! I can't force start it. That's interesting. I bought node execution. Right. Um, put us on the node. And then fire it. There we go. There we go. A little bit of a push in the wrong direction, but that will do for us. That's fine. Um, what if we do that now? Are you going to fire? There we go. We're, we're using an extra burn, but it doesn't matter. We've got five burns on this engine, so that's interesting. So note to self, uh, you actually want to, if you're going to use this, I would actually move it onto the node before you actually come to prepare the craft for this a long time before. This craft is not very mobile, um, so we probably could have done it. Uh, probably should have activated the other RCS up here if we really wanted to turn quicker, but I have not. And you know what, it's a bit about a practicality of doing these things, put small, pro, small RCS on this and things like that. So what will be interesting to see is what the situation is with this. Now we used, we've used all the RCS here, so we can use these RCS jets for forward and reverse. We've got these ones here as well, which we can also use, and that's not gonna kill us actually doing that. So we, we may wanna try that. Um, what I will probably do is I'll probably dump this We'll reposition it into the normal orientation, dump it, and then we'll do refinements with this potentially. Although, ah, we do not have a short range antenna on this thing. So actually we may do the whole refinement thing using the whole craft, I don't know. So we've got about 3,800 meters per second left on this right now. And yeah, we're not, we're not doing too bad. We could actually speed this up a little bit, do a, a bit of manual, the old manual time warpy warpy, and we'll slow that down when we get there. Where are we actually at in, in relation to... Okay, we're on the dark side of the... Of course we are. Of course we are on the dark side of the planet. There goes some stuff. We've actually got enough speed up to go past it. So yeah, that's, it's very... I do like the um, the waterfall engine plumes and stuff, but yeah, it's interesting. So this is the craft. It's a while since I've actually looked at this. It's actually about a week since I've looked at this. So I've been doing other stuff, work and things. I hate it when the view changes like that because you think the craft's gone crazy. I don't know if I like it. It's a very simple, very Russian-esque feel to this, actually, the grey colours. Whereas the Americans, of course, they, they would go for something a little bit more sort of gold and shiny, probably. Right, let's have a look. Now, because we've lost so much fuel now, obviously, we are a lot lighter. Um, what we could do is we could actually dump our liquid oxygen kerosene and just use RCS for this, which is actually probably the more efficient option, if I am thinking about this. Because that main engine is not going to... So let's dump liquid oxygen, dump kerosene. There we go. And we'll use RCS for this. The RCS is on. So the RCS can do a little bit of meandery fixing and stuff. Right, let's do a focus view. Am I getting an interaction? I am not. Now we're using... And that's it, trying to fire the engine. So we're not going to do that. We'll get that out of there. Right. We are currently not hitting target so we need to do a little bit of refining of this how are we going to refine it i think uh do we even want to refine it at this point how far off are we so we could do some little sort of rcs related movements um so if we do this if we're if we put on if i actually do this and we pull all of our rcs together we'll actually get the rcs going there we go so all the rcs is now on board so if we've got the rcs on and we do a little bit of 
translation, you can see, yeah, if we can do a little bit of fold backwards, a little bit of backwards pulsing is going to bring us closer. You can see our separation is like so. What's our, uh, you see, we're not using much in the way of delta v at all there, so that's not a bad one to do. Um, and what we can do is, that one's bringing it down, that's bringing it down. We can actually combine a few, that one and that one and that one. There we go. So we're actually doing a little bit of a translation and we're doing a, uh, retrograde burn just a little bit as well so you're doing a little bit of sort of a few moves at once just to try and make it a little bit better for us and you can see we've barely used any delta v actually uh, oh actually i tell a lie the delta v readout on kerbal has not changed oh we're going up a bit um we are spinning so we should really uh put some control on hold uh where do i want to be i want to be prograde actually let's position ourselves prograde that's probably the best place to be that will actually make it easier for us to do some of our maneuvers and stuff and know what we're doing. Right, there we go, that's nice. Right, because we're gonna be looking at prograde normal, anti-normal, things like that while we're doing it. And this is this is probably not the way to do it. What I would actually suggest is put maneuver node in, but uh, but I'm not gonna do that. So we're gonna burn, we're gonna go prograde burn now. Just gonna burn towards prograde with our RCS. And uh, that's it, so we're actually short by by a little bit there, but probably about. It said we were short by about four meters per second, but uh, you know, it's it's never right, is it? So there we go. Do a couple of those to bring it down, and a little bit of that. And what we're actually waiting to have happen is for us to actually get a proper encounter. Yeah, look at that. We're within. Oh, we're going to be close. I wonder how close we can actually get it. How close do we need? There we are. Right. Now we're just going to play around with this a bit. Okay, no, nope, that's the wrong thing. That's not Mars. Mars does not have an atmosphere. Uh, well, it does have an atmosphere. It doesn't have, doesn't have greenery. That's the, the big thing. So focus view. I forgot that I'd actually changed the, the thing. Right. So let's have a look. Okay, so we're burning a little bit uh, prograde right now. And we're just going to right click that. So we're getting closer. Uh, are we coming in? We're coming in pretty equatorial, actually. That's not bad. Um, not a massive problem. Bring that in like so and uh, of course you know this is a nice little way of visualizing but there we go what about a bit of this a bit of this and this so we could do some more refinement actually i think maybe we will let's actually have a little prediction we're going to come in here let's have a look um add a maneuver here what's what's going to be required for us to get nice and close to mars like really close. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of Delta V requirement. So we really want to have a look at maybe, maybe when we're, we're maybe when we're sort of leaving, leaving our sphere influence, um, maybe about here. Let's stick a maneuver in there. Right. So we put a maneuver in there. Now I'm going to jump back to Mars to focus view. Now, of course, the maneuver is over on Earth, so that's annoying. But what we can do is we can come over here and we can go maneuver. Thank you. Get the vessel info out of the way. Go maneuver. Bring this in. And then we can actually play around a little bit with it. So we can go, okay, that's that's not bad. Put this on next. So, right. So that's making it worse. What I want is to get closer somehow. So far for two. That's going the wrong way. That's okay, that's better. Oh, that's that's nice. That is, we're now coming into something that could be interesting. This looks pretty, pretty, that is actually pretty equatorial, isn't it? So that's 50 meters per second of burn. That would take us close. How close does that take us? 300, we haven't taken the Mars mission yet, have we? So I don't know how close we have to get. Um, but that's, that's close for our first probe. That's a nice close sort of pass with our first probe. I'm tempted to actually say we should we should dip it into the atmosphere, but we'll decide once we're en route. Um, maybe just skim it in. I don't entirely know how, how high up Mars's atmosphere is gonna be, but uh, we could have a think about that. So get back to our craft. We're gonna now uh, decouple, um, are we? No, we're not. We're gonna, we're gonna accelerate to that point because it's going to give us some communications and it's in about five hours, so that's fine. 
we're going to gain some stuff. We've got no nothing on board this at the moment. What we're actually using this for is the antenna that's on here, because we don't have a short range antenna on this thing. Uh, so that's that's basically what I'm looking after. We've got this node coming up, so that's okay. Good stuff. Uh, we can get rid of the pork chop selection because we don't need that anymore. Uh, we're going to put this onto node. There we go. And I want to thank you very much. I want to actually have a look and see. Um, give me back to my craft, please. Right. Um, is my antenna on? Why, why is my antenna not on? Antenna targeting Earth. Okay, it's supposedly running. Um, is it? Ah, it is. Right. Are we actually getting a? Oh, it's covering it beautifully. Wonderful. Right. So what we can actually do is, I can I can get rid of the. Uh, get rid of that thing. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. We don't need that anymore. Um, we've got this thing going on and what I can also do is then come up here while we're while we're waiting to start our burn Which will take a, a little bit of time um, We can come up here to discovery 4 we can go to uh, let's have a look. I want this thing We're going to turn everything on get all the experiments ready There we go a magnetometer Are you done? Are you scanning? Yes, you are doing good running all right, so they are running is that good have we are we in high space or something? Is that possibly what's going on? Give me some information on this one. We are Earth space high. Okay, so that's going to get a, a chunk of science while we're doing it. Brilliant. That is perfect. That's what we wanted. So is this our... This is the first of these to go out this far. That's why, isn't it? Of course it is. Although I think we've got your yeah, pressure scanner and, and temperature scanner we could actually take off. So if we want to spend one of these to Venus, we wouldn't need to put that on because I think we've already got those from Venus. But... I'd be tempted to send one of these to Venus with uh, solar panels on instead of instead of these actually might be a better plan um, but we'll have a look so we've got no real science coming in yet I don't believe let's have a look have we actually got data transfer yeah we've got quite a bit of data transfer no data going across no data from the mass spec that's interesting what about this this is the magnetometer okay interesting right so we just got to do this burn now. So again, I have to come back out of here. We have to refocus on the Mars. Where's the Mars? Where's Mars? That's Jupiter. That's Ceres. Where's Mars? There we are. So we've got a focus view. I should really just follow the uh, the line, shouldn't I? Right. So we're going to be doing this burn. Um, and we want to try and get nice and close to it. Okay. And of course, doing this while we're in the Earth's sphere of influence actually is a lot more efficient. If we did this, as you saw, when we get close to Mars, we're trying to shorten an angle that's that's really qu quite close. It's like you know making it a much more acute angle and things like that. Here, it's a bit like you know, uh, I only need to move a tiny little bit to make a long-term sort of change. So yeah, that's that's the positive. Uh, let's start the burn and see what happens. Now this may or may not do what I want. I've I've got a history of these things slewing all over the place, um, which is annoying. But we'll see. We'll see what it actually comes up with. It is coming up into some sort of thing right there, right? I'm going to tag that and... Now that's an interesting little f f pathway, isn't it? Is that actually going to turn on the axis and pop back out? It is! Ah! Okay. Okay, so that's interesting. Oh, I want to turn, turn that node off and turn that to T. Hold me there. Hold me there. Thank you. Right, so that's now going to be there. So let's do a bit of... Oh, that's very low. Uh, that will do for us, I think. Right, it's 135. That may be atmospheric. I don't know. I don't know. But if it is, ah oh well will potentially burn up. Um, we will send another one of these craft anyway. I'm not sure how close you have to do it. It's supposed to be a learning experience for us. So that's the first one done. Sent off on its way, which is wonderful. So what we can actually do, and this is a suggestion I would have for everybody, is uh, can we can we rename you? Here we go. We're going to rename vessel. I'll close that as well, actually, while we're doing this. Um, I'm going to rename this and put, put Mars on it. Primarily just so that I can actually remember which one's which. If you've got multiple probes, particularly if you number them and they all have the same name, 
brilliant idea just to uh, to give them uh, an actual name that says what they are. So that's going to be that there. We're going to, um, there we go. It's calculated its departure in a day. Um, we've got the Mars window. We're going to get rid of that. So we're going to actually um, timey-wimey warp this, I think, to its transition point. We'll do that. Um, and then we can see what's going to happen. It may it may get some changes to this path, flight path. I don't know. Uh, that's you know it, it's it's been pretty good. Kerbal recently has has improved dramatically. You see, you're getting quite a bit of science back now. What's that doing to our electric charge? Our electric charge is deed as a nit because we've been transmitting. That's why. Okay, that's not a problem. We'll just uh, we'll just let it run. You can see we're getting data, we're getting data and we get electric charge and then we're running out because we're basically transmitting all the science we can. So what we've learned is that we, we're going to use that whole year in space, traveling to Mars, just gathering, gathering the charge. So what could we do to stop the problems of, of running out of electric charge? Um, I could turn the transmitter off. I could actually turn, if we go into here, we could actually go into discovery and we could actually go data and we could where are we uh, if it comes up thank you very much um, you can actually turn off transmission of stuff so you can actually turn it off but we're actually out of power now because we've got all that science going on so let's have a go let's see are we are we in the we're not yet are we no we're not yet are we we're not out into the uh, sphere influence of uh, we're about to hit Earth escape in about 14 minutes, so we can just run through that reasonably quickly. There we go. We've now done Earth escape. We're now out there in the solar system. We can actually just check as this stayed the same. Yeah, so modern KSP is pretty good at keeping your maneuvers and everything the same, so that's not a problem. Right, let's have a look. What are we looking at? What we can do is we can actually turn off the science. If we turn off the science like so, and then we just do a little bit of timey-wimey warp. We can see we're getting a little bit of stuff back. What we're actually probably doing is still probably transmitting all of the science that we had built up over, over all that time. Um, so yeah, um, so let's actually have a look. Are we getting, are we getting? Yeah, you can see we've got, we've got equipment running. So we've got some of these experiments on the side that are actually still gonna be using all of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this off like so. But what I want to do is go to, uh, where is it, is it config? Yeah, we're going to knock off the battery and supply limit because we don't really care about that. Um, and we're going to let this thing go. So this thing will run out of electricity and then just recharge itself regularly. It will it will just keep doing that. Um, but that's fine because it's going to gather our science whenever it can. In a real space program, we would probably uh, be choosing which experiments do when and what to do. I mean, we could, we could you know, turn off the antenna. We could even if we go into data there is the option to turn off this and we could store all of our data until the whole mission's done once we've gone past mars and then we could do it now in in rp1 at the moment you have unlimited storage space for data so that's not a problem um in kerbalism normally you actually have hard drive space um so that would be a problem if you're playing in kerbalism in sort of stock well stock with mods um, but in rp1 we have unlimited hard drive space at the moment if they bring in hard drive space for kerbalism now that would be something you could not do. You'd have to be selecting which experiments are running and you have to really would actually manage your experiments, which I think would be much more accurate to the real world, but we'll see. So that's going to head off. We've got our marker down there for it's It's going to arrive in Mars in 187 days. Um, so we need to get back and figure out what's going on elsewhere. Right, so here we are back at base, as it were. We're just going to have a look and make sure that everything looks okay. So we've got our our um, sphere influence change of discovery for when it's going to get to Mars. If we have a look at the actual mission, where are we? Fly by Mars requires that we go to within 20,000 kilometers. And um, and that's it, and transmit science, which we're going to do when we're, when we're there, when we're in the sphere influence of Mars. Um, gets us a big chunk of money. It gives us three years to do this. Um, I'm actually going to take it now, I think. Yeah, we're going to take it now, because it gives a little bit of funds. Um, the Mercury flyby, again, we get four years to do this. It gives you a big chunk of funds to get as well. Again, 20,000. The other one to think about is maybe Jupiter, which gives you, uh, yeah, you can go a lot higher for Jupiter. And then you've got Vesta and Ceres. Now, Vesta and Ceres, we might be able to do. I'd have to check. I think we may have the Delta V for it. Uh, it's it's touch and go. I need, to, I need to get one of the more detailed Delta V maps out. Jupiter, I don't think we do. I think we'd need a, a more powerful upper stage or, or a better rocket in general. 
Um, Venus Orbit we cannot do at the moment, we just don't have the ability. Um, we'd actually be better off going for G Venus Atmospheric Probe, but again, uh, we don't have the heat shields for this yet. Um, and of course, if you go an atmospheric probe, probe in, you might as well go for landing. So that's those two are going to pound together. So we're going to have a look at the Mercury flight. We do have, um, if I jump back to here, we do have a, an upgrade point. We're going to chuck that into the R&D. There we go. Now it's doing better. And we have some science which we could spend. We've got about 130 science. We've got a chunk of science when we're doing those missions. Um, you get nothing in this small nuclear fusion reactor section, which is annoying, actually. It'd be nice if there was something there. I think it's, it potentially would have something in some mods. I'm not sure which ones. Um, we could go for in upgrading tanks, which would give us uh, some improvement. We could go for just pushing on with basic life support to get these vacuum life scrubbers, but that's a long way to go. Um, I think docking is something I'd like to sort of maybe push on with. Or lunar rated heat shields because that would potentially allow us to do a Venus landing um, we have the technology to do that so I'm not in a hurry yet but I think we're probably going to be looking at probably will that give us that's low earth orbit that stuff I think we were going for those and those were the targets I have to check back on the previous episodes and then we're maybe looking at oh, that is that is tasty though isn't it and then you could move on to this this actually just requires that which would give us that's 60 and 50. We could actually do that now. We could jump straight to there and then we'll be ready for, for upgrading. Yeah, you know what? They're good. They're such nice engines and they're so cheap as well. It would it would be a really nice potential launch vehicle for us to have for some of the bigger sort of interplanetary stuff. Oh, I'm very tempted. Um, yeah, I think we'll maybe go for that, but I'm going to hold off a little bit. Um, which then means for the rest of this episode, uh, it's going to be another transfer window, I think. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to launch the, I'm going to run through time. In fact, we do that now. I'm going to run through time with Discovery 5 and we're going to get it onto the launch pad. There we go. Get Discovery 5 onto the launch pad and we're going to launch it for that Mercury window. And then that leaves us with Discovery 6. Right, I have duplicated our Discovery 5, 4, whatever craft it is. We've now got so many of them, it's unbelievable. I think it's Discovery 3, technically, that's, you know, Discovery 4 that's gone wrong. And then we've got, anyway, yeah, yeah. It's Discovery 3 that became Discovery 4, that's the successful one in orbit, that's now the Discovery 5, that's going up now. And then the Discovery 6 is about to be built, and the 7 and 8. So the 7 and 8 are there basically just because we've got build time. Um, because we can send them to Venus or wherever. Potentially, we'll check the Delta V on them. We might be able to send them out to Ceres or Vesta. I don't know. We could give it a go. Um, we can have a look. In fact, we can have a look when this one's on orbit. But we're going to roll out uh, Discovery 5. I'm going to launch it. You don't need to see it launch. You've already seen one of the Discoveries launch. And I will join you in orbit where we can do some uh, some departures to potentially mercury here we are in orbit the year uh, the launch went reasonably okay um you can see not a perfect orbit not the way i would like it we are very close to the atmosphere so if this was going to spend any longer than uh one one day well one day 24 hours in orbit yeah we, I, i'd be concerned about it so decent sort of rendezvous well decent angle with the moon but that's not massively a, an issue with mercury because um I think it's 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 quite inclined, is it? I'm trying to remember. yeah, it's got a reasonable inclination, right? Which is why you get these sort of really good periods for doing transfers with Mercury, because it's not just about, you know, the, the relative positions of the planets. It's gotta be on a nice position on its on its inclination. So let's have a look at that. We're gonna do a uh, transfer maneuver node planner. There we go. Uh, get that there. I'm, I'm actually losing my mind right now. So we are going to do a pork chop. There we go take that ASAP oh look lovely that's a really nice one and it's going to take 105 days to do the, the transfer so we're going to create that node and we've got 25 minutes to wait okay so what we're going to do is we know this craft I want one of the things I have changed here is we've actually activated the uh, the RCS up here so this should help us to actually position this craft a little better when we actually come to do this this maneuver. So what we're going to do is we're going to warp to 
uh, near where it is. So if we actually bring up our, our alarm clock, no, it's not it's the build thing, I want the alarm clock. The alarm clock has created an alarm 24 minutes ahead. So it's got a minute before that burn time, I think, yeah. So we've got about a minute for, for that. So we're gonna, we're gonna let this uh, do, I think we can get into position in a minute. So we will just, uh, We'll just let this warp forward just a smidgen. You can see it's spinning out. Now, because we're going in towards the sun, we're going to be burning in a really nice position, which is we're going to be burning. Uh, we're going to be burning on the on the light side of the planet for once, which is a really nice. You can see there, we've got much more agile maneuvers there. We're going to burn a bit more RCS. We're going to use some of this uh, Delta V from earlier on, but that's not a massive issue for us. That's not going to kill us right now. Um, this thing is only going to be doing a flyby. We're, we're not trying to go to orbit. We dare have nowhere near the Delta V required for orbit. Mercury is uh, quite horrendous for getting getting to for orbit. And we may we may try that in the future. I don't know if we will have the time for it. We'll see. So there we go. We're ready. And I'm actually, yeah, you know, what? we're going to we're going to we're going to let this thing do the whole process this time. So we're going to let it do its thing. RCS is on. So the RCS should fire. In fact, I can actually do a little bit of pre firing for it just to keep it. There we go, just to keep it. There we go, it's gonna do a little pre-fire. It's gonna fire itself now, is it? Oh, I need to stage. <laughs> That's the thing I need to do. Whoopsies. Yeah, so you do need to stage yourself. That's one thing I forgot about. So the reason it was firing like that was because it was actually firing the uh, the, thr the throttle. Um, so, okay, we are a little bit late, which is it's fine, you know. It's not like we're not tight on Delta V here. We, we actually aren't. We've, we we have enough Delta V in this stage uh, to not worry about it. And we can do maneuvers and changes with this on the way. Um, we sh what I will probably do is I will probably decouple this this time. And then we'll just take this further out before we do the, the maneuvers and changes and things like that. So you can see the other way of us actually doing it, which is not to mess around when you're very close. What I would suggest though is if you have mass allowance to put a, a, a close antenna on this, feel free to. You could even, uh, you know, you could even build your craft in such a way so that your avionics unit here that's got antennas would actually transport that. Or you could have a detachable antenna you're going to get rid of. I don't know if you you would want to do that. Um, having that close close near Earth antenna is really useful. These dishes are wonderful for long range, but the big problem you have is that, um, yeah, they. Uh, they can't communicate when they're too close to Earth because they do not target specific dishes and things like that. They're, they're targeting Earth. They're targeting the center of mass of Earth, and they're just going to fight on it. You can, and I showed you in the previous episode where you can you can fiddle with these. You can you can get them to give you signal if you really want to, but it is a complete faff. Um, particularly, you know, they have to be one of the three main sort of deep space network dishes on the crap on the actual planet and. Um, I hate to say it, but often you are not near one anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Anyway, we can we can do a physical time warp there. I'll just speed that up because you don't need me talking while we're burning all this beautiful fuel that we've wasted all our time getting up in, in out of the atmosphere. Um, yeah, I think we do need to get ourselves a bigger launch vehicle. I think something a bit chunkier because I would really like to look at Mars and Venus landing, particularly if we're going to do something a bit more substantial with the moon. It would be nice to have that. Um, and potentially you've got things like Jupiter, Saturn. We really need to get missions going to reasonably quickly. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, abort node execution. We're going to turn that off. Um, we're gonna close this down. Right. Let's have a look at what our situation. Oh, now I had not seen that. We're flying past the moon. Okay. Do you see that? So we actually skim past the moon. Oh, now this, this may create an opportunity for a little bit of science, actually. We can get high over the moon science when we're in this period here. So that's 13 hours, 55 minutes and 17 hours, 38 minutes. We could potentially gather some science there. So what I'm going to show you is what I would do for this situation, because we don't want to drain batteries because we're going to be doing all sorts of maneuvers. We will do our maneuvers on the far side of the moon if we have to. But where are we? Um, we have signal. We're going to disable data transmission. There we go. Turn that off because we don't want to do that just yet. We want to want to stockpile all all of the beautiful data that we can get. Now, let's have a look and see where we are in relation to the Mercury. We are close, actually. So let's see. Let's try and do a little bit of 
well, we're not close. We're, we're close enough. We're, go, we're gonna we're gonna try and do a little bit of just hold me in position there, right? I think I want to be pro grade actually. Give me pro grade. I think pro grade is going to help us a little bit. So we'll put the craft in pro grade, and then we'll do a, some little RCS burns, and we'll see what's going to happen. And I'm doing this now because we're so close to Earth. I can only do this so close to Earth when we've got that that transfer stage attached. So at some point I'm gonna to have to get rid of it and then redo these, but we can we can at least Right, this is gonna be bonus bonus, is it? Yeah, that's not bad, that's bad, that's bad. Right, so yeah, we just need to do a bit of prograde burning. Okay. Uh we are carrying you know what, we're carrying extra fuel. Let's dump let's dump some of the fuel first of all. We did this last time as well, so we need to get rid of a bit of uh liquid oxygen and a bit of kerosene. There we go. Wonderful, thank you. That's just going to lighten it, makes it a little bit more efficient. It's still not a very efficient way of doing it. So you can see we're, we're you know, huge distance, you know, half a million kilometers away or something like that. I'm just going to use that RCS. You can see we're eating away at it right now. Uh, if I do that, it stops, isn't it? Because I've got the mouse over there. So, but we've got enough of it to not really worry. And all we're doing is actually increasing our speed. Now, the big thing will be actually because we're going past the moon. It'd be, I don't think the moon, we're going so fast past the moon and so far away from it, it shouldn't really affect us. Of course, this isn't n-body physics we got involved, because uh, if it was n-body physics, the moon would be affecting our orbit even now, it would be affecting our path. Oh, we have, we've lost it. Now that's interesting, there we go, we're back. Right, we lost it there for a minute, so that's interesting. Um, oh, get off that. Uh, I want that one off. There, right. Right. Okay, so that's interesting. What about a little bit of bit of that? Will that help? That is interesting. We we actually lost our rendezvous there, which means uh, that we're probably out of plane at some point. We're getting to a point now where we're out of plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed up the time a little bit, and I'm going to ah, we've lost it. Oh, now. Is that physical time? Yeah, physical time warp has actually lost the, lost the. We've lost it. Oh, we've lost it. Okay. Now that is a problem. Why is that a problem? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we are. Where were we? Where was our? We have lost it. Oh dear! Right. So what we were gonna, we will do is, I'm going to first of all, we actually need to check that we're not hitting the moon. Right. We are not hitting the moon. So what we'll do is we'll come out of here. We'll get into interplanetary space, and then we'll get a bit clever with this. Um, so let's, uh, let's do that. You know what? I'm actually going to do. We're going to decouple. That's going to give us a big push, which I actually didn't think about. We're gonna get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. We are targeting Mercury, which is there. So we need to think about when we're gonna get near Mercury. I think I think we, we should be getting past it here. Uh, and that was the plan, if I remember rightly. So maybe less than that. What's that time there? That's one way. I think we're trying to get to it there, but we're gonna to have to play around. So what I will do is um, we will, we're gonna pause this here because this thing's gonna be uh, potentially tricky. We're gonna pause this here, and now I can't get back to the spacecraft. There we go. Right, we're gonna pause this here. Um, I'm actually going to, I can't activate all of the science because we're not far enough out. What we'll do is we'll, we'll let this go out a bit until we can actually get science. There we are. Um, thank you. Oh, it's jumping up. We've got a lot of gibbering around at the moment to turn off the RCS completely let that roll a bit um, I'm gonna have to do some maneuvers but we'll probably save that for the next uh, for the next episode because I think we're gonna let this craft fly past um, fly past the moon we'll gather some science there see what that is like that could be quite interesting I think we're gonna be a reasonable distance away it looks like we're gonna be quite far away um, so we'll fly past the moon gather some science there and then uh, set it on its way and that'll be our next episode. So from me until next time, have a great one.